What is up everybody? Welcome to this week's Jesse Speck YouTube video. I am planning to do a case swap in my already 2ZZ swapped MR2. As crazy as that may sound, but yes, that's what I'm planning to do. And honestly, I feel like the 2ZZ is getting a lot of hate compared to the Honda engine because they break, etc, etc. And I truly feel like I really like the 2ZZ engine and I'm a Toyota guy more than a Honda guy. So I do feel it would be interesting to take some clear and how do you say objective kind of look at is it really worth it to go from the 2ZZ to the K20 engine with some facts and figures. So lots of dyno sheets and stuff coming today. So hang on. This is hopefully going to be a useful video for all you guys who are hesitating between the K20 or the 2ZZ swap and an MR2. I think this will help you a lot to make your choice. So without further ado, join me and let's dive right into it. All right, we're back in the office. So let's compare both of these engines. So of course, on one side, we have the 2ZZ, which is a Toyota engineered by Yamaha and Toyota engine. Basically, it's a Toyota block with a Yamaha head, basically and very high revving engine, engine going up to 8,400 or 300, depends on the tune. And it's a really popular engine because it's also been used a lot by Lotus and many of their Lotus Elises, Exiges, etc. So it's a 1.8 liter and it's a really actually very well-functioning engine, even compared to other 1.8 liters like the B18, for example, that I will show you a little graph now, but you can see that there's a considerable difference between both of these engines. So we have a stock 2ZZ compared to a stock B18. Okay, fair enough, the B18 had a lot of miles on it, but in the end, you can see that the 2ZZ is really an amazing engine and it runs really well. And in a light chassis like the MR2, you can actually make a lot of frustrated people on the circuit. Let's say it like that. And then on the other hand, we have the K20 and that engine is like super popular because it's a two liter by Honda, has VTEC. All you know that, right? And they, the, the, I'd say the specialty about that engine is, first of all, the big difference is it's a two liter. So you have we all know that there is no replacement for displacement, but on the other hand, um, a bigger engine also can be a little bit less high revving. And actually, this is not the case with the K20 because the K20 actually can rev higher than a stock 2ZZ. But on the other hand, um, as you will be seeing, at least the K20s that are in European Honda Civics, for example, the EP3, like I bought. I actually passed one previously on the dyno and they do not make as much horsepower as they actually should. What I should also say about the K20 is it's probably one of the most popular engines for swaps, like the K-swap. You can K-swap about any car and the results are absolutely mind blowing and in all fairness, these cars can take, these engines can take a lot of abuse. Uh, many people actually turbo or supercharge them. You have all kinds of cars running with them, like the Ariel Atom. People know about that one. That's just a pure beast, etc., etc. So I'd say like both of these engines are similar in some ways, but on the other hand, uh, they they are quite different. So I'd say one of the biggest differences, is of course, the the, the um, displacement on the Toyota, you have a 1.8 and the other one has a two liter. But on the other hand, in both engines, you have variable valve timing and, and also the lift. There is lift in, in both of these engines. So what is lift? Basically you have the, the, the engine valves are not just gonna stay open longer, but actually the open length. So the lift of the valve is actually changing as well which considerably, you can imagine if the valve opens like this much and then suddenly it opens this much, I'm exaggerating, 
but you can imagine that the volume of air going in or out in the other case will increase considerably so that is typically the when lift kicks i'd say either even on a vtec or on a, a 2zz engine you can really hear like the moment where it engages it's really like i'll run it now but it really it changes at once and basically you can really feel it kick in and that's really the awesome feeling of these uh, both engines is that they are pure na engines that have a really raw and aggressive sound and feeling to them but on the other hand this video is also going to show you that actually the 2zz is way better than people think even in comparison to the k20 so before skipping and being angry at me for saying that honda boys listen to what i have to say because this is actually pretty incredible in my opinion. So I'm gonna pull up a couple dyno graphs for you on the screen and I'm gonna comment on them and explain them to you so you can a little bit see what I'm talking about and why the 2ZZ is more than capable and a really good engine. So let me pull up the first one. All right, let's start now and take a look at what a stock 1ZZ versus a stock K20 that I actually had both on my dyno, how these two compare. So if you look at the yellow reddish line, that is my stock 1ZZ I had in my MR2, just with the Fujitsubo exhaust. And then you have in blue, a stock K20 engine in an EP3. And that graph is in light blue. So if you look at it, below 6,000 RPM, there isn't that much difference between the 2ZZ and the K20, which is very odd, right? And we're talking about a, we're talking about a 1ZZ here. We're not even talking about a aggressively tuned 2ZZ. So what the heck? That's pretty mind blowing if you think about it. But of course, at 5,800 or something like that, you have VTEC that kicks in. And then of course you have a huge jump in performance. But if you ask me, that actually looks very similar to what happens when you compare a 2ZZ and a 1ZZ by overlaying their graphs. So that's already a bit questionable. Is the stock EP3 engine actually worth it? You will see that actually it's pretty surprising. So let's take a look at stock K20, so the same EP3 and my sort of mildly tuned 2ZZ engine. So let's take a look at that. And you can see right away blue graphs. The blue graphs is the EP3, so the K20, and the multicolor one is my 2ZZ. And what the heck, like. You can see like the, the, the K20 is making 182 horsepower peak power and the my 2 zz this in this run it was making 204, 205 horsepower. It did go up to 207 or 208. So the engine, my engine of course is running really good. But if you look at the graphs, so let's take a look at the torque. So basically up until let's say 6000 RPM. The 2ZZ actually has more torque as a 1.8 liter than the stock K20. That is pretty weird, right? And then actually when the VTEC engages a bit earlier than on my 2ZZ, you can see that there is a slight increase. I could actually probably do something similar by actually engaging VVTLI higher, uh, quicker on my, on my 2ZZ. It would actually maybe make something, make it even perform better than the than the K20 even in that area and of course once the 2ZZ has VVTLI engaging totally <laughs> gone like you can see like the we have a 12 newton meter difference between K20 and 2ZZ and we can see that roughly overall except due to the quicker engaging VVT um, the VTEC there is there is really it isn't much more advantages to have basically the K20 
K20 over the 2ZZ. We can look at the horsepower, it's roughly the same thing and we can see that there's a whopping 22 horsepower difference on the same dyno, roughly same conditions and same uh, TCF factor. So honestly, like looking at those numbers, stock EP3 against mildly tuned 2ZZ that I had, I'm not convinced it's worth it actually to swap over. So then you guys are saying, Jesse, what the hell do you just bought an EP3 and you're going to swap in the stock K20 and actually lose horsepower compared to what you had with your 2ZZ? And that's where I say, hang on guys, let's take a look at some more data. So let's look at the, so let's compare a slightly tuned K20 that I also had on my dyno that I actually uh, tuned as well. And let's compare it just for the fun of it to the stock 1ZZ. So what happens when you have a stock MR2 and you actually tune, uh, you put a K20 and you tune it a bit further? This is what you get. So here we see, okay, this is way more interesting. So we see there's like a, there's roughly a 34 Newton meter difference. The, two, the, the K20 is superior at every RPM. If we look at the torque, it's superior at every RPM. And if we look at the horsepower, of course, same story. In no, at no moment, the K20 is inferior and we see there's a whopping 80 horsepower difference between both of these cars. So this EP3, or should I say K20, that we mildly tuned, NA tune, uh, I think the only, it was a race car, so only the catalyzer was out, otherwise roughly stock, basically, intake as well, no cold air intake, nothing. Um, we managed to get, with a couple slight bolt-ons, we managed to get 217 horsepower. That's already getting much more interesting than, uh, and that is, as I said, a mildly tuned EP3, okay? So there we already see, oh, this is getting better, okay? So let's take a look now and what happens if we superpose the graphs of uh, my MR2 and the mildly tuned K20. Let's take a look at that. So we have here the graph and as you can see, there is no replacement for displacement. This graph truly shows it. So if we look at the torque, we can see that the K20 makes torque, more torque at any RPM basically. Although at around 7,000 RPM, the 2ZZ actually significantly catches up and they are actually pretty similar around 6,800 to Redline basically. So that's pretty interesting. So you can see that the K20, at least in similar, this is a pretty fair comparison to be honest, they are actually pretty close, these two engines, okay? So I don't think the K20 guys should look down too much on a 2ZZ because you can see the numbers here, they're pretty, they're, it's a fair comparison and you can see that there is a difference, but it's not that huge. It's only 200 cc. Now, let's look at the horsepower and there you can see it's of course much more uh, visible. The, 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 the 2ZZ also in any RPM is actually inferior than the K20. So as I said, this is my lightly tuned 2ZZ and a lightly tuned K20. So we can see this is a fair comparison and there's like a 13 or 14 uh, horsepower difference between both of them. And I'd say on average there is, yeah, at least three, three to 10 horsepower difference. So there is really an advantage to have that, especially on a lightweight MR2 that is way lighter than an EP3. So there's definitely something to be done. And in all honesty, do you really think I'm going to leave my EP3 engine stuck? And that's where the difference is bigger. Is I'm going to be, of course, modifying the engine. I'm not going to turbo it or anything for the moment. I really like NA in this car, to be honest. I don't want it to be a hooligan, just out of control power monster. I want something that is really very efficient for grip racing, okay? So, of course, the easy solution would be to put a turbo and all that to drag racing, but I'm not interested in that. I like 
circuit racing and I like NA power. I love turbos as well, as you probably know, and I have a chaser as well, and I go all out on the turbo stuff as well. But for this car, I truly feel I want to stay NA. So there is a video like from Gears and Gasoline that shows what a K24 or K20 can make in an EK4 chassis. And it's actually a really fast time attack car, so you might want to check out their videos as well. But that sort of gives the potential. So I think honestly, like making 250 or a bit more than 250 NA power at the engine, it should be possible, honestly, and with a really aggressive tune and everything. And I hope, and that's also one thing that I hope is going to be more fun, I mean, less heartbreaking than the 2ZZ, is I will actually do a baffled oil pan from the start, not a wannabe baffled oil pan, but a real baffled oil pan from Moroso probably, and oil radiator and other stuff as well, and also with gauges. And I hope also that I will be able to go further in the tune to actually protect the engine as well with a new ECU. I'm still balancing between Hondata or Link ECU. Let's see whoever is more attractive to work with as well. So that is something I'm going to be seeing. So anyway, so that really gives a little bit, wraps it up. Um, just for the fun of it, if you want to see the difference between the stock and the modified K20, here is a quick graph. So in blue, the stock K20 and the tune, a lightly tuned, NA tuned K20 in comparison, you can see that there's like a 35 horsepower and 20 Newton meter difference. Um, it's worth it to give these engines a tune and they are really much more aggressive to drive once you actually do it. So the EP3 Euro tune is actually, should have 100, 200 horsepower, but they absolutely do not make that horsepower. I think that is a fact in stock form, they don't do that. So yeah. So to wrap up this video, I hope you guys realize, so the Honda boys especially, that the 2ZZ is of course a smaller engine, less modern, has less high technology from its VTEC and VVTI system. But on the other hand, it really runs well. And I'm convinced that that's thanks to the fact that Toyota and Yamaha actually work together. And if you look, some of the best engines ever that came from Toyota always have Yamaha heads on there. Like you have the 1JZ, 2JZ, 4AGE, the Beams, 3SGE, all these engines, they, always, they all have one thing in common, including the 2ZZ, is that they have a Yamaha head and a Toyota block. That's also why probably um, Lotus likes these engines so much is because they really are truly phenomenal engines. So, of course, K20, we all know the reputation it has. I hope you guys see the difference. And now, honestly, I think either one are cool. The difficulty of the swap is way harder or there's more work and more costs involved in the K20. So the 2ZZ is the cheaper version, in my opinion. And anyway, so this is an awesome way to start this new series and this full I hope probably between 10 to 20 episodes on how to swap a K20 into an MR2. And I will be doing it in a very similar fashion than my 2ZZ swap series. So make sure to check it up here if you like, if you're also interested in figuring out how to swap a 2ZZ. Yeah, so I hope this is going to be useful. I hope this could shed some light on some controversial topics. And I thank you so much sincerely for watching my videos and supporting my channel. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button, share, subscribe, all of these awesome things. And I hope to see you in the next episode and see you next week. Peace.